All right, there good evening, are. everyone. 702. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to read a letter uh, about four days old, all oh, a week, I guess, uh, from Lawson, Charlie Lawson family. To Talapa from Tampa. Tuvalu celebrates its independence. We are blessed, and the gospel is an honor and privilege to share. Uh, Tuvalu celebrated its 43rd independence on October 1st. Many of Grace Baptist Church members were involved in their local communities in preparation for events. They understand the importance of being in the world, but not of the world. It is a blessing to see the baby church in Tuvalu not become isolated. Having the Pelagi uh, foreigners gone has been a blessing to them as they grow. They are able to keep their building expenses paid and even have the lease for 2022 taken care of. I know from Ecclesiastes that what work we do on this earth is subject to others when we are gone, so it is a pure gift from God to see the work of the gospel uh, in Tuvalu continue. For those of you wondering about Harry, he is doing well. He has taken a job administering COVID vaccine shots on the outer islets. He continues to grow in the Lord. We miss him tremendously. We are blessed in so many ways. To share a few things. One, we love our church. Pastor Jupp grew up in a missionary family and we're able to understand each other more deeply because of it. Kirsten has started to open up a church and it is good to see. Jeshua is planning on being in the Christmas play and we hope to shamelessly leverage this to bring our neighbors to church. Uh, the kids are getting great grades in school. Uh, we were not too sure how they would ultimately adapt and we are seeing that they are holding their ground as Christians and making friends. Casey just got a good job. She works with children in the afternoon helping them with their homework and English. She is able to utilize her skills from Tuvalu and it helps grow the most pleasant attributes of her personality. Lastly, I've had several good job interviews. No offers, so arguably they may not be the best interviews. Uh, we remain taken care of financially and look forward to how God leads. Kirsten wants a house that is hers and we remain hopeful that it would please God to allow it. There have been several opportunities to share the gospel lately. I don't know if it is because we are looking for the opportunities or if God is ready to use us again or if we are ready to be used by God more. Likely, all three. Either way, there are two things that really light me up in this world. Sharing the gospel effectively and preaching. Tomorrow I fly to Fort Dodge, Iowa to attend a missions conference. It will be awesome to see what God does. The opportunity to assist in missions is an honor and also much needed. The world is hanging by a thread and needs the strength of God through the spreading of the gospel more than ever. I look forward to sharing and teaching and helping in any way possible. Thank you for your many prayers and love. Your kindness and giving is beginning to bring us to the point of needing to do the same for others. I apologize for my thoughts being a bit scattered in this letter. There is so much going on. Nothing but nothing that prayer and sleep can't handle. Uh, love in Christ, his family, and then thank you for the birthday wishes. I'm not sure I'm happy about it being older, but I'm happy to have heard from you. So uh, I'm going to pray for them quick, and then we'll uh, open our Bibles to Revelation. Uh, let's pray. Father, again, we just thank you for the Lawsons. We thank you for uh, your using them to start a gospel church in Tuvalu. We thank you that the church there is doing well and that uh, they are burdened for their fellow countrymen and that they're being faithful and that they're um, taking advantage of opportunities that they have to be involved in the community and uh, outreach. And so we pray that uh, you continue to bless them and grow them, uh, meet their needs. Thank you that they're giving and the Lord continue to burden them for others and, and help them to be strong. We know that uh, there is some opposition at times and so uh, with a, a strong state church and so we pray that you'd help them. We pray that you continue to meet the financial needs of, of the Lawsons. We pray that uh, Charlie would be able to get a job soon. We thank you that he was able to uh, go to this missions conference in Iowa and we just uh, pray, Lord, that you would continue to open up doors for him to preach and share your word and also that you would guide specifically as to what uh, you would have them as a family do. And we're, we're thankful that they're in a good church. And uh, the pastor there has grew up in a, a missionary's home. So um, they're able to um, have a good relationship. And so we pray that uh, that would 
continue and uh, use them, use Brother Lawson there even in that church to be a challenge regarding the mission field. And again, Lord, we just thank you for uh, the opportunity that we had to participate in their work. And uh, again, we pray that uh, you provide work for Charlie soon. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, Revelation chapter 8. We've been looking at the trumpet judgments. I'm going to review quickly uh, the first couple that we looked at. I guess we looked at uh, three. Revelation chapter 8, verse number 7. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up. Uh, so we, we remember that in Revelation 7, before the sealing of the 144,000, uh, there was, verse 3 says, uh, don't hurt the earth or the trees until you seal those that God wants sealed, the 144,000, and then uh, verse 3, I guess it's 7, 3, hurt not the earth nor the trees, or the, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God. So it's not surprising that after that, we see hurt coming to the earth and to the trees. And so, uh, verse 7, first trumpet, third part of the trees burnt up, all the green grass. Second trumpet, second angel sounded, verse number 8, and as it were, a great mountain. So it doesn't say it was a great mountain, as it were. It's, so it's, it's something like or something similar to a great mountain uh, burning with fire, probably a meteor right of some kind or a meteor, whatever the proper word is. Third part of the sea became blood. Again, it doesn't say became as blood, became blood. Uh, was it blood in color? Was it blood in viscosity? Uh, it killed creatures in the sea. Third part, verse number nine, uh, creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Again, uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, third trumpet, verse number 10, and the third angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, upon the fountains of waters. The name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became wormwood. Many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Wormwood means bitter, if I, I remember right. And so um, there was this, um, the, the waters were bitter, and men, men died because of it. Water was contaminated. Um, Thomas writes, a note here, I don't know if I shared this last week. Thomas writes, uh, symbolically inclined interpreters have seen the star as representing a false religious leader, a deluding influence given the people as an act of judgment and an angel. So different thoughts there. And then he says, um, to call a false religious leader a judgment uh, what is, is hard pressed. And then heresy is hardly a judgment inflicted on men as a penalty. And so I think the star, once again, is probably a meteorite that came and contaminated the waters. Uh, verse number 12, fourth trumpet. So this is the, a new one. We didn't look at this one last week. Fourth angel sounded. Third part of the sun was smitten. Third part of the moon. Third part of the stars. So as a third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Uh, LaHaye writes this, The same God who created light in the first place is able to diminish it to one-third. And then he says that this, Actually, day and night will seem to be reversed. For there will be 16 hours of darkness and 8 hours of daylight. That's if you say there's 12 hours of, of each. Uh, and then he says this corresponds to the ninth plague in Egypt, uh, Exodus 10, where the, the darkness 
Uh, if you remember, the darkness was uh, 10, Exodus 10, 21 to 23 says, darkness which may be felt. Thick dark, darkness for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the Israel, uh, all Israel had light. So this darkness was, and I think um, some of you have been in caves where you actually cannot see. You, you literally cannot see your hand in front of your face, okay? Uh, that, is, that is darkness. We went to Carlsbad Caverns once and they bring you way down the bottom and you've experienced that as, as well. So that's, that's darkness. And remember what he said? He said, no. That the mind would go literally crazy if it could not see light within a, I think he said an eight hour period. Wow. If somebody was stuck down there for eight hours, they would go crazy. I don't remember because that. Because of the, wow. the darkness. Interesting. You don't see, yeah, see nothing. Um, and, and that's, uh, and of course, there is still light, but the the, um, the moon and the sun are affected. Um, what else does it say here? Oh, let's look at, so remember this, sun smitten, third part of the moon, third part of stars, third part of them was darkened. Uh, keep your finger here and turn to Luke 24. <coughs> Luke 21 is kind of a a uh, parallel passage to Matthew 24. In Matthew 24 we spent quite a bit of time in, way back when. But Luke 21, Luke 21 beginning with verse 25. So Jesus is talking, if you have a red letter edition you'll see that. Uh, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And so Christ said there would be some phenomena in the skies during the end times. And it certainly sounds, you know, what, what Christ says here um, sounds a lot like what we read. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and upon the earth distress. And it sounds a lot like Revelation 8, 12. Third part of the sun was smitten. Third part of the moon. Third part of the stars. Third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not. Uh, and so uh, we have that parallel between what Jesus says and what we see in Revelation chapter 8 here with these trumpet judgments. Now verse 13, And I beheld and heard an angel. Uh, some translations have eagle, actually, but that doesn't mean the United States, okay? I just want to put that out there. Um, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. And, and you know, we've talked about this or mentioned it several times. So we did four trumpets. Now trumpet five, six, and seven are each called a woe. Well, one, well, two, well, three, the same as trumpet five, six, and seven. But it's it's interesting. Here's think think about what's being said here. And um, my wife and I. Um, so we have VCY TV. It's a it's an app. Mm -hmm. VCY TV, and uh, we watch it. We have a, an account on our computer, and then we put it on our big screen. So we watched. A Thief in the Night or something. Not A Thief in the Night. We watched part three. Oh, Image of the Beast on Sunday night. We watched him in the... And it's an old... It's a 70s movie. You can tell from the clothes and the hair <laughs> and all that. You know, it 70s. It was really, though. Uh, but some of the stuff that... I mean, for it being them, so they had no idea. Right. Way back yep. then, in the 70s. It, so it, was it, it was interesting. It was about, basically, the, the rapture had come. Uh, people had left and... 
uh, than people were trying to survive and um, something I never thought of. There were people that got saved and to survive, they tried to devise their own fake image so that they had something on their hand or that looked like they were like everybody else. Um, but any, anyway, um, you know, it, it really, some of the, I guess when we read it is one thing, when you kind of see, even though they're old special effects trying to, uh, there were trees, they, they were in some kind of, I don't know what they were in. And then all of a sudden they went outside and all the four, everything was burning. And, and, uh, you know, that's what we, uh, we have here, but, but think about this seal judgment. So uh, thinking about verse 13. Woe to what happens next. Very condensed. Woe to what happens next. They've already, we've already had the seals and we've already had some of the trumpets. So just to, to kind of recap what we've seen, there's fightings and wars, there's famine, there's widespread death, uh, fourth part of the earth's population killed by sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beasts. Uh, people martyred for their faith, a great earthquake, discoloration of the sun and moon, uh, meteors falling onto the earth, and then from the trumpets, judgments, uh, third part of the trees are burnt, third part of the sea creatures killed, third part of the ships destroyed, a uh, third of the water becoming bitter, and daylight being reduced by a third. So here's all this calamity already, and then it says the woe for what happens next, the next three trumpets. And of course, we know there's a trumpet, you know, trumpet five and then trumpet six and then trumpet seven leads into the, the bowls or the, the vials. Um, all right, well, we'll see how far we, we get here. Chapter nine, verse one. We have an interesting twist here. Chapter nine, verse one, and the fifth angel sounded, first woe, fifth angel, fifth trumpet, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we have a star being called a hymn. Uh, we have a star that has intelligence. This, this star is given a key and opens a bottomless pit. So star here is obviously not a luminous object that shines in the sky. It has intelligence. It has, we'll get into next week, in fact, next week your assignment is uh, who is the star referring to? All right, I'll try and remember to put it in the bulletin as well. But who is the star referring to? The star is, in, it's an intelligent being that does stuff. Okay, so it is something, somebody, uh, there's several different uh, thoughts as to who it is, um, but we have a star, he's called a hymn, he has keys to the bottom of the pit, he has intelligence, so we'll talk about the who or what next week, but uh, a question was raised, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but Revelation 8.10, Question. Huh? Is the bottomless pit the, the bottomless Next pit? Next week. Hold on, what is that? <laughs> it's the bottomless pit. Is the bottomless pit, it's, it's not the hell. The bottomless pit is where, where everybody will end up. The so, bottomless pit is, um, it's, in the Greek, it's like the abyss, okay? And, and basically, the thought is that it's a shaft, okay, that goes down. It is not hell. You're absolutely right. It is not hell. It is, 
Um, it's fine with us. It's most uh, tie it in with the angels that are held captive, uh, captive in Second Peter or First Peter and Jude chapter or Jude six, verse six. Uh, but it is not hell. I guess to to you know, it's a holding place of spirits, uh, I believe, and we'll we'll talk about who they are and what they are, but um, also called the abyss. Um, okay, good question that I didn't want to answer. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, someone had asked a question before, Revelation 8 verse 10 says, an angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven, and then chapter 9, verse 1, a star fell from heaven. So one, I'm interpreting as a literal, chapter 8, verse 10, a literal luminous um, planet, for lack of a better word, in chapter 8, verse number 10, but in chapter 9, verse 1, it is obviously not. Um, they're both, in the Greek, they use the same word, okay? So... Why interpret it as a literal star in verse 10, but as a symbolic in verse number 9? Why do that? Louise? Well, because the first one acts like a star. The second one, they're giving qualities of a intelligent thinking you have to be able to one word one word what one word answer <laughs> from what you just said qualities no angel no <laughs> i'll give you a clue i am thinking <laughs> of the word Thinking what? I'm thinking of the word trunk in my head. Trunk. T-R-U-N-K. What am I thinking about? Oh, uh, well, it, it could be a tree or it could be a chest, a trunk that you could open up. Could be what? Tree. Tree, yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about what my wife often says when she comes home from shopping, will you go get the groceries out of the trunk? How, how do we know which? Intelligence. Huh? Intelligence. Context. The context. How is it being used? You just went all the way around the world for context. Context. <laughs> she didn't. I thought she had it. It was well, there. It was hard. context. How do we know how to take <laughs> something <laughs> in a passage of scripture? I is context. Yeah. Okay. Star is in eight ten. Acting like a star is the same as the word star in. 9 1. The word star used in 8 10 and 9 1 is used 24 times in the New Testament. 14 in Revelation. Okay, let's turn to so here's what, what I'm I'm kind of um, here's how here's how here's why here's why I take a star to be a luminous object coming from the sky, planet, I don't think that's the proper word, uh, in 810, great star from heaven, I take it as a luminous planet, I take it, so literally, I guess, 9-1, I take symbolically, and I do both based on the context. We know from 9-1, it's being used symbolically. It's called a hymn. It's given a key. A key is to something. Okay? So we know it's symbolic because the context tells us it's symbolic. All right, let's go to chapter 1. Chapter 1. Of Revelation. Of Revelation. 
116. We're not going to look at all 14 occurrences, but um, it's kind of a, a reminder or a reinforcer of why context is important. Or how it helps us interpret, really. Uh, chapter 1, verse 16. Uh, we know it's talking, we know from verse 13, talking about the Son of Man, verse 14 is description. So we're we're seeing the glorified Christ. Okay. Uh, tells us who he is in verse number eight. So anyway, that's that's the context. And then verse number 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Did, was Jesus holding seven luminous planets in his hand? No. We kind of know from just, okay, it's in his hand. It's really talking about Jesus. And John is, has this vision of Jesus. And if we keep reading... We get down to verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So we are told in the context that Jesus is talking the seven stars that are in his hand are not luminous bodies from heaven they are angels messengers to the seven churches okay chapter 2 verse 1 uh, these things saith he that hold the seven stars in his hand talking about the same symbolic these are our messengers or angels chapter 3 verse 1 Angel, uh, these things saith he that hath the Spirit of God, uh, seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. Again, we're, we're carrying it over from 116 and 120. Uh, Jesus is giving them the message to the churches. And so, uh, talking about those angels or the messengers for each of the churches. Then we get to uh, 613. Chapter 6, verse 13. I'll back up to verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became as blood, or I'm sorry, became black as a sackcloth of hair. Moon became as blood. Stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. So we have a choice to make. Is this, we, we can, oh, is this messengers to the churches that Jesus was talking about in chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3? Is it, the, is it the messengers to the churches? Or what does the context say? Earthquake has to do with earth. Sun is physical. Moon is physical. Stars of heaven uh, heaven in verse 14, verse 14, mountain, verse 14, island. So we're talking about all these physical things. So context says Jesus is not talking about angels to the seven churches. He's talking about physical things. That's how we use the context to see what is, so stars is used a couple different ways in Revelation. Which way is it being used? The context is the best way to find out. Chapter 8, verse 10, and we we're already there. I uh, feel like I've read this like three times already, four times. But, um, you know, 8, 10, third, or a third angel sounded, there fell a great star. Well, in the verse itself, Talking about rivers, talking about waters. Uh, verse number seven, which we already saw. Uh, fire, hail and fire were cast upon the earth. Trees are on the earth. Green grass is on the earth. Uh, sea, in verse number eight. Creatures in the sea, all talking about 
physical things. So sticking with the context, we should say, okay, star in verse number 10. Again, we have a choice to make. Are we going to make it angels, messengers to the churches? No, that doesn't fit the context. Um, physical, luminous body does fit the context. Falling from heaven. Or you can say it's a person. But why would you say it's a person when everything around it is physical? Diana. You know that Satan and his angels did fall out of heaven. And these, this is an angel, and the angels are messengers. Know Satan's a fallen angel, and he's got fallen angels, and it has to do with a fig tree generation. So they're being thrown out of heaven. Okay, I'm, I'm, my question was in 10, in verse 10, chapter 8, verse 10, should we be taking that literally as a literal star falling from heaven, or are we going to say because verse 9, chapter 9, verse 1 is close, we're going to make those two the same? You compared it to a lamp. Hmm? Compared it burning as if it were a lamp. Right. A, a man, or an angel is not going to be burning like a lamp. I wouldn't have Every, everything. Every... That's why I figured you're right. It's got to be a star. An angel is light to me. I don't think it is. A fallen angel. Okay, so. We know that Satan's going out of heaven. We know that he's an angel. We know that he comes out of season for the real Christ and Antichrist is coming. So this is. Satan being out of heaven. Are, we are you talking about 8 verse 10? I'm not talking about 9-1. I'm talking about 8-10. Yes. yes, that's a third part of the creatures. So 8-10. What are we talking about? I'm talking about 8-10. Chapter 8 verse 10, we have, we're, we have a choice to make. Are we going to take it literally? Or are we going to take it symbolically? 9-1, we have to take symbolically. It tells us, the text tells us to take it symbolically. Because an angel, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, a moon or star can't take a key, and a star is not called a he, and a star can't take the key and do something with it. So we know 9-1 is symbolic. I'm saying 8-10, we should not take symbolic. Chapter 8, verse 10 third angel sounded, fell a great star from heaven. All those things make sense to say it's earth, it's sea, it, it's mountain, it's everything is physical. So we shouldn't take star and make it symbolic or spiritual when the context is pointing to physical. You still look... No, I just, it just cleared up okay. that it is in fact a cosmic star. Right, right. Is, yes, to, yeah. yeah. We, we, I think yeah. we need to, um, one more, and then I'll come back to you. Look, let's turn to, so we have star in Revelation being used for messengers in chapters 1, 2, and 3. Um, we have it certainly being used symbolically in 9-1. Uh, I believe we have it literally in chapter 6, in chapter um, 8 that we just looked at. Look at Revelation 22, verse 16. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star okay so jesus is a star but we don't say revelation 8 10 it's jesus we don't say 9 1 it's jesus we you know we we have to we have to, the context what i'm trying to make the point i'm trying to make is the context should dictate how we interpret make sense so 8.10, I am taking literally because the whole context is talking about signs and wonders and things happening on earth and judgment. 
And then 9.1 tells us to take it symbolically because it's a he, it's given the intelligence, it is given a key, uh, actually takes the key and does something with it, opens the bottomless pit. And so, um, again, the, the point is we have to, when, when it says it's symbolic, when the context points to it being symbolic, we take it symbolically. If the context doesn't point symbolically, my belief is we should err on the side of physical, literal. More importantly, what does the context say? The context helps us uh, de determine whether it should be physical or not. Did you have a question or a comment or no? Well, on this chapter 12, 9. Yep. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him, which is referring to chapter 10, the great star from heaven burning as it were. Chapter 10 or? or verse 10, 8 10. Yeah. That is referring to verse 8 10. The great star from heaven. So everything around it is physical, but you want to make it's it symbolic. symbolic. It's symbolic of well, Satan and his angel being pulled out of heaven. Okay, but mm. so is there fell a great star eight seven eight seven cast upon the earth? Is that the real earth? Yes. It's trees Satan, are real Satan trees. Coming. Trees to symbolic of people. Satan is an angel coming to the earth to disturb to so, the earth. Okay, well, we will continue to mm -hmm. agree to disagree. I will say again, context should dictate how we interpret. When chapter 8 is all about physical things, then we should not make star be something different in verse number 10. We certainly should make it be something different in chapter 9, verse 1, because the context tells us it is not a real star. It is impossible for a luminous object to come from heaven and receive a key and do something with a key. That's not possible. But chapter 8, verse 10, a star can fall from heaven and can be burning. That's what meteorites do and can go burn like a lamp, and can fall into the rivers, and contaminate them, and do certain things. Um, there's, you know, this is supernatural happenings. Unprecedented is some, a, good, a good word to always keep in mind, because there, there will be, and, and imagine John, here's John, first century John, trying to put things into words that are mind-boggling, you know, really. He's, he, he has to use words that he knows to try to convey that which he's seeing. He's a vision, he's in the spirit. We learned earlier in the book. Louise, you had a question. No, I, well, I was just gonna say that your, your example at the beginning is, is very good. Because Trump, there can be, depending on how you talk, there are four different meanings for trunk. The trunk of a tree, the trunk of my car, a chest, trunk, and um, the old, trunk of an elephant. Old-fashioned I mean, old swimming pants oh, and are the, fun, I mean, fine. Yeah, and true. unless you put it with something else, you exactly. have Exactly. All by itself, that's what I said. In my mind, it could be any... Anything, and that's why the words around it. Yes. And what did what did number eleven say? It was its name was wormwood. The and name of the star. Yeah. You know. So. So it's something different. But is it wormwood because wormwood is bitter? Bitter, and it's just something. It it was a special star that made the water bitter as opposed to a angel making the water bitter.
I don't think there's any who named one wood. I don't know. Hmm? I know Michael and Gabriel, but I haven't heard yeah. any wormwood. 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 <laughs> okay. Good, good point, though. It's called, I mean, has a name, yep, and d certainly did something to the, to the waters. Okay. Anything else? We'll stop. So, uh, assignment. Next week, who is this star? Who, who, who is this person? Who is this being in chapter 9, yeah, verse works. 1, that comes down? <laughs> yeah. Well, you should have some reasons. Um, that actually, um, Lahey said something that kind of like, wow, that's interesting. I, I had not thought of it. So it's good to read different people to um, kind of see what different thoughts. And certainly uh, very few people are 100% agreement of everything in Revelation, what it's, uh, <laughs> the sim symbols, and so. Rod, do you want to close in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you gave us, and the night that you've given us to learn your word in Revelation, and it was always confusing to me until Pastor started explaining it, because I read it three times and still didn't understand, but when it's explained like that, I think it's we all do have different opinions, but I believe that we have to take the Bible as to what it's saying. And we thank you again for everything that you do for us, and pray that we'll be here again on Sunday and next Wednesday. And that's about all I have to say, Lord. I just thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Ron. <laughs> What commentary on my haze do you use? What commentary on my haze? Actually, I'm, I, I, 